now I would like to mention that, of course, Lionel Commotion Lab was not the only institution in the, within the Army uh, involved in, in mobility research. The Waterways Experiment Station had a, a mobility division which was older than the Land Local Lab, probably founded in 1944, and their first task was to solve a mud mobility problem because of World War II, in World War II vehicles had problems moving in mud. And another institution was mentioned already in Auburn, the National Tillage Lab existed also. And the Transportation Corps was also involved in cross-country mobility. The Transportation Corps actually didn't do in the work in-house, but they contracted a company called Wilson, Natal and Raymond. Now, Natal, Cliff Natal was the brain of that organization. Uh, he, he designed several highly mobile vehicles, for example, the Polcat, a two-unit two articulated vehicle which has been used extensively in Greenland. Uh, in, seven, in the seven, early 70s, his company went bankrupt, so he was a very good, excellent engineer, but not a good businessman. So, luckily for him, by that time, the job of chief of mobility division at West became vacant, so he became the chief. And he and I were, became very good friends and worked together uh, in the future. He was, as I said, he was very, a very brilliant guy, and, and he also had a tremendous sense of humor. I would like to quote one of his postulates. It says that the more mobile a vehicle is, the harder it is to recover it when it bugs down. <laughs> think about it. It's true. Wes, I don't want to talk about West Mapo uh, methodology a lot, just maybe a few sentences because George Mason will be talking about will be talking about it. But as you know, they use the cone index of the single instrument to, to measure soil strength. And then they conducted many, many, many experiments in different soils with different vehicles, and then they tried to come up with empirical relationships between the cone index and whatever they measured with the vehicle. They even employed an old math teacher whose job was to come up with these fancy empirical equations, this factor and that factor and the alpha exponent and all that. And so that was a purely empirical approach. And Becker thought that his, his was just semi-empirical, so he thought that his method was really superior to what Wes was doing. Now, that didn't go well with the chief of the mobility division at Wes, who at that time, in the late 50s, early 60s, was Bill Turnbull. And so they had a lot of very sharp arguments. But I am happy to report that none of them came to a fist fight. Even though at the Turing conference, actually, St. Vincent in the lobby during a coffee break, it, it, it came very close to that. <laughs> uh, okay. The Line Locomotion Division produced, as I said, many research reports, and we also made presentations with the Uni uh, American Society of Agricultural Engineers and so on and so forth. So, all this work started to spread around the world and, and uh, in university libraries and, and, uh, and industry, people in industry started to become familiar with this and soon, soon they started to uh, approach us and of offering to work with us, cooperate with us. Uh, among those who, whom I'm talking about, and there are many, but I would like to specifically mention Dr. Alan Rees, who was a professor at the University of Newcastle in England, uh, Professor Norman Radford, 
from McGill University. I think McGill was he? Was McMaster. He? McMaster. Okay. McMaster. Anyway, Canada, from Canada, <laughs> he was an expert on Muscat. The doctor, Professor Zöne from Germany, and then Major Seva, I would like to mention him again, and Mike Dwyer.